Hey, welcome to Performance Reviews, where I give you the review from the technician's point of view. And today we're gonna to be talking about large item pickup. And large item pickup is one of those things that really has never been a problem in the past, but has been a problem that has been created by marketing. So companies have come up with all sorts of ways to reinvent the wheel. Now, traditionally, if you have large items on the floor, the way you'd go about it would be to simply lift up the back end of a canister floor attachment and suck it up. As you can see, a regular floor tool, the kind that's been around for ages on hard floor, works just fine with large objects. No reason to complicate this design, and that's why they've been making the same floor tool for 30 years, as it just works. I really think the only people who struggle with large item debris pickup are people who are trying to use the wrong vacuum for the job. I have here a carpet specific machine. We're gonna try it on bare floor. As you could see, that kind of sort of worked, not really. And that brings us to the quote unquote solution we see, which is often to include a soft roller on the front of an upright vacuum. And this has been done to various different degrees, various ways over the years. And I think a spinning brush roller for large debris could have some merit. I think the way that it's generally executed is pretty bad. I've said before, having something spinning on hard floor could scratch the floor, especially if there's not suction going to that device that's spinning to clean it off. So today we're gonna take the breakfast cereal challenge, just like you see in the adverts, just like on this box, and see how this machine does. We're also gonna try a machine that's designed for industrial large item pickup. Videos on this machine, but this is a Lindhouse. And this is a machine that was specifically designed to pick up large debris in a commercial environment where people are going to use and abuse this. And that seems like an unlikely matchup. The reason I'm gonna put both of these together, they both have a similar retail price and the street price I was actually able to pick the Lind House up for about $50 less than I was able to pick the Shark up. Again, your mileage might vary, but these can be had for about the same amount of money. So if we're doing large debris pickup, which should you buy? And that's something we're going to investigate today. So first off, let's do what they do in the advertisements, and let's try some breakfast cereal, both in a scattered and in an individual pile, and see how the machines do. Now these machines do push differently and at different speeds. So keep in mind if you see me moving one machine a little bit faster, or a little bit slower, it's not me trying to mess with the results. They do just handle differently. As we can see, the Lindhouse did exactly as advertised. However, it did throw one piece of breakfast cereal away. Let's try the Shark, and we're gonna have it on its hard floor setting. Oh, whew. that thing smells bad. I haven't used it here in a couple of weeks. Um, so Shark did the same thing as it threw a piece of cereal and then it moved this forward. It did better than the last time I tried to do this with the Shark. It's, it's never been very good for big item pickup, which is interesting because they advertise it for big item pickup, but in the manual, it explicitly states not to do it. That's how the breakfast cereal cleans with both of these. Let's get to the more serious stuff. All right, let's give these Q-tips a try. Right, the shark was able to do the Q-tips. Well, that seems not to be a challenge for either of these. All right, let's see how they do sucking up some coins. Uh, not very well at all. Let me show you the results. Oh, 
Let's see if the Lind House does any better. Well, it would appear the Lind House sucks up coins. Let's try some shell casings and see how these do. Once again, all it's done is displace the items in another place on the floor. Let's see how the Lind House does. Well, looks like the Lind House picks that up, no problem. Well, next, let's do some drywall screws and see how it does. Oh boy. And of course, one back there. So, again, that's not gonna work for the shark. Let's give the Lind House a try and see if it can do that. All right, without problem. Next, let's give the pencils a try. I don't think pencils are gonna do it for the shark. Let's uh, try the Lind House. Well, that was no problem for the Lind House. I really got that pencil stuck in here. Let's see just what we can do about getting that pencil unstuck. Apparently, that's where one of our Q-tips went. And eh, there's our pencil. I have here all the items the shark struggled with. Anything from the coins to the bit of breakfast cereal kicked around, the screws, Q-tips it did so-so on. It picked up some of those and threw some of those out. The shell casings didn't get those at all. And of course, not the pencils. The pencils are probably the most extreme item here. Everything else is stuff I actually would vacuum up in my house without thinking twice about it with my central vacuum or your typical canister vacuum. Now, if you had a direct air machine like an Auric or a Kirby, of course, you don't want to suck up any of this stuff except for the, maybe the breakfast cereal because that could damage the impeller. Now, I want to explain why the two of these did so differently. They're both bypass motors. They both have two brush rollers, but I'm going to show you a really big key design difference between the two. All right, let's take a look at the undersides of these. So there's a couple huge design differences between these two. I think I'm gonna point out the most obvious one. And you know what, let's let's take the, the brush out on the Lind House so you can see it. Um, you can see that there is a big suction channel right here that's very wide, but you notice it's between both the front and the rear brush roller on this. The shark has a suction channel right here going this way. There's no suction channel. There's no suction channel going right here at all, which means the front roller, this one, gets no suction to it. So it relies on the machine hopping over the object and then forcing it into this area with suction. So as you can see, that really affected hard floor pickup. And when I did my review of the shark, I highlighted that a lot of people thought I was just moving it too fast or something like that though, but that's, that's why it doesn't pick up on hard floor as well as a traditional machine. Now the Lind House here is a commercial machine. And my argument is if you're picking up large items or large debris, both of these machines cost about the same. So there's no reason if you were doing a lot of large debris pickup 
that you wouldn't pick something like the Lindhouse over the Shark. It's got a longer warranty. The machine's built in Italy instead of being built in China. Also was operating with a three quarter full bag during this test. Where the Shark is a bagless unit, which means you have to go outside, empty this, and then every time you use it, you're supposed to rinse these two filters out. And then there's a replaceable filter right there. So a lot of maintenance that you're supposed to do with the Shark. The Lindhouse just has a bag and the, uh, the filters you change every package of bags, they come with the package of bags. I don't know if you can see the filter here. Um, so on the Lindhouse, one other reason would got everything all in there, that this works so well is the opening of this is as wide as the brush roller almost. And that's why this can pick up the pencils. I can't think of another vacuum that really can pick up pencils. This is really, it's, its purpose in life is to pick up wide things. So if you had a restaurant or you had some sort of environment where you had a lot of stuff on the floor, this definitely would do a great job with that. Now this is also available in a cordless variant, crazily enough. So you don't even have to get a corded one. You can get this machine in cordless. And the first time I ever used one of these was a cordless machine. And uh, using, using them both now, I really, other than price, I don't see a reason for getting cor corded or cordless. They both operate fantastically well. Uh, and the quality of this is just outstanding. Um, this thing's really built to last and it's built to be serviced. You can get to everything on this if you need as well. So that gives you an idea kind of why the, these machines operated so differently in that little series of tests we did. So if you learned something uh, from this, give this video a thumbs up. If you want to talk about something else vacuum related, go check out our Discord server. I'll put a link in the description below. If you're interested in getting one of these, I'll have a link in the description below as well. Have yourself a wonderful day.